Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Sean from Hawaii Information Service. Today we're just going to be talking about Research 6. We're going to be going over the major functionalities, so I'm going to be talking about some of these a little bit more in depth. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of our beta testers. Uh, we started beta testing in May and uh, we heavily promoted it in June, but we've had record-breaking participation levels. We've had over 1,300 users logged in at least once and over 60 users logged in more than 50 times. So we just want to say thank you for all the, uh, all the participation. All right, to get back to the login page here, um, the Research 6 login page it's going to pretty much look exactly like it did in Research 5. We've added this little association news little bulletin here. So anytime the boards have important information they want the members to see, it's just going to show up over here. You're going to be using the same login credentials you did in Research 5. So this is going to be your new uh, login page or your home page. Uh, we've actually renamed it and it's going to be now called the dashboard. So one of the major changes we've made in Research 6 is uh, the primary navigation functions like your search, your contacts, listings, markets, free tools. Those um, functions now are going to appear on this left hand column. In Research 5, they used to appear on the top of the page. Uh, you used to hover your mouse over each individual menu, and they used to show you the subsections of each in a little drop-down menu. Now you can click on this little icon here to see the subsections. The My Prospect functionality is now going to be located under the Contacts section. So if we expand Contacts, Prospects is going to appear here. Now your latest listing activity is going to show up the same way it did. Um, <clears throat> so your latest listing activity is just going to show you um, the listing activity in a particular area. It's going to show you new listings, um, any status changes, sold listings, price changes. Uh, we can filter this activity by clicking on this uh, filter button here. So let's just say I want to see just the listing activity for the island of Kauai. I can just select Kauai. You can also choose to filter certain other things. Once I click Save Changes, your latest listing activity is going to show Island of Kauai. So in Research 5, um, there was a couple other frames. There used to be an Open House section, a My Prospect section, and a My Listing section. So those um, individual frames used to slow down the home page a lot. So what we've done now is um, we've actually just uh, combined that in a way. So you can actually see these um, different menus from the same section of the page. We can just click on this tab here to see open houses. So right now we can filter the open house activity the same way we would the listing activity. We just use this filter button. We can choose the island. We can choose to say we want to show open houses for just today or for the next seven days. We can add open house by clicking here. So you have the option of uh, putting in a contact. Uh, you can also put in your MLS number your start time, the duration, and also some notes if you want to. Uh, this prospect tab, so this is just going to show you your prospect matches. And those of you that don't know what a prospect is, it's uh, just when you have a contact that has an automated search attached to them. So whenever there's uh, new matches, it's just going to show up here. Uh, this My Listing tab, it just uh, shows you a menu of your listings. Uh, we can choose to show just the active listings, uh, listings expiring in 30 days, uh, listings sold within the last year, or your pending, which is like contingent or under contract listings. So the latest listing activity, uh, one thing I didn't mention, uh, we have these little statistics uh, below. So we have condo median and residential median prices for the Big Island in Kauai. And so these prices are based off the last 30 days, so they will change. And below that, we just have some news bulletins here. So any new information is probably going to show up below here. In Research 6, we've added this little um, basket icon here. So in Research 5, uh, if you want to access your basket, you have to first use the Actions tab and open up the basket. It would appear in a little tab on the side of the page. But now you can just access your basket from anywhere in the site by just clicking on this um, little icon here. 
uh, disconnect icon. Uh, if we ever call for text help, um, sometimes they'll they'll try to do like a remote session is what we call it. It's uh, we use a, a little third party tool to, to to connect to people's computers and uh, manually help them. Uh, this little um, icon here is going to take you to our new help page. So it's help.hiinfo.com. So we have um, <clears throat> some places where you can leave us some feedback. Uh, if you open up this um, bug and known issues, uh, you can see a list of our, our known bugs and you can actually see the tickets. Uh, this tab is pretty interesting. So we have um, some little videos and some <clears throat> some information about the changes in Research 6. So you can find all that information uh, from this uh, help page here. Uh, but back over to Research 6. Um, this little uh, column here can be compressed by clicking on this little icon here. If you click it once, you'll have a full page view of the latest listening activity. If we hover our mouse over, this column actually slides back. If we click it once more, it just frames on the page. To access your profile, uh, you can click on this little downwards arrow next to your name, uh, my profile here. So this is where you're going to make any changes to your contact information, your email address. Um, you can also enter some uh, social media links here and your, prefer, uh, your preferences, so your preferred methods of communication and other stuff. You can change your password from this um, tab here. If you enter your new password once and then once more. Uh, it also gives you your password requirements below. Just click Save. And that's about it for the dashboard. Um, next, I'm just going to open up Search and I'm going to go over the Search for Listings page. So those of you familiar with Research 5, uh, we tried to keep the, uh, the search page as similar as possible to make the transition easy for everyone. So <clears throat> any of you that had customized search pages in Research 5 or saved formats and saved searches, those are all going to be mo moved over to Research 6, so you won't have to worry about recreating anything. Uh, the tax key field, um, so <clears throat> the tax key field, um, you can enter one tax key in, uh, you can enter ranges, so you can say 4444 to 4445. You can, uh, uh, the task key box understands or to not, so you can say uh, 444 four, four to 446 and not 445. So it un understands ranges, uh, commas. It's a pretty diverse field. Uh, this little grayed out box here just indicates that these fields are, uh, you can't write anything in them. So you have to select uh, one of the answers here. So they're preset. Uh, this little magnifying glass here used to be a little find icon. So with it, the way this would work is uh, if we have a condo project in mind, just type in the condo. We click on this little icon here. It matches it. Um, Click on the selected answer or the correct answer, and you're going to notice the project falls under this request line. So any of the search parameters you put into the search page are going to fall under this request line here. So for example, I'm just going to use this tax key, active, you can notice the search parameters fall under. We can click on this little trash can icon to remove the individual search parameters. We can also click on it. Uh, we can click on this little add fields link here. Um, what that does is it opens up a list of searchable fields in our system. So for example, if you can't find a field um, here, you can just open up add fields. And this is going to give you the full list of fields that we, you can search by. So if we want to search by, let's see, let's search by assess value, 100,000 to 200,000. What we do now is we just click on this little blue check mark here, 
and close this and you're gonna notice the search parameter falls under the quest line. So the formats drop down menu um, now appears on is gonna now appear on this blue formats button. So if we drop this down once, uh, you're gonna have the same formats in research six. <clears throat> A couple of things we've changed. Um, your save formats are now going to appear on this save tab here. So if you click here once, uh, your save formats are going to appear. Uh, if you hover over each of these fields, it just shows you what exactly is in each of these formats. We can click use to use any of those particular save searches or save formats. Excuse me. The labels format used to appear under this um, selection here. And what we've done in research six is we, we just uh, moved labels over to this tab here. So if I wanted to do a label search, I could just click over to this tab here and then just perform my search from there. Uh, the options menu here. So in research five, uh, there used to be an options drop down menu where you, you build this like a customer format or if you want to download, you could select download format. Those options are, are now going to appear here. So if we just open up options, you're going to have those options. Whenever you select the format, um, MLS, it's just going to show up under the selected formats uh, section here. So I'm going to run a search right now so you can just see what your search results might look like. And hit search. Excuse me. Access value. That. Search again. So this is going to be your MLS one line format. <clears throat> It looks a little bit different with the new UI and UX, but the fields are going to be exactly the same. So if we do uh, open up one of these listings, let's click on this tax, uh, this MLS number. Uh, this is going to be your new MLS mid format. So this format is um, the most popular format. Um, by popular demand, we've added photos. So <clears throat> there's a little preview of the photos here. Um, those of you that have tried the earlier versions of beta, uh, we actually removed these um, icons. And they used to just be a little drop down menu to uh, select um, each of these options here. And by popular demand, um, we brought these icons back. Uh, if you drop down actions, it allows you to copy, print, email, basket, PDF, or, cust or put this information cust um, in customer format, which just means it removes like the private remarks, it removes the agent information, uh, so you can send it to your client. Uh, the basket function. So just going to show you if I basket this information, it appears, uh, this is going to be your basket. I can click back now and I can get back to listing. If I want to see my basket, I can just click on this basket icon and we have our information here. So just back once more to get to listing and to get back to your search um, ram, or your search results, we can just click uh, back once more. So one of the really nice things about the new system is the back button works. In Research 5, when you click the back button, <clears throat> it would actually kick you out of the, out of the system. So um, now we have a functional back button. One thing you're going to notice um, when you're viewing the information on your mobile devices, um, which is one of our primary uh, functions, or primary um, goals was to have a mobile-friendly MLS. So what you're going to see now is uh, when you're viewing this listing, let's see, on your mobile device, the listing is going to show up um, <clears throat> nicely for you. So in other words, uh, the data is going to start stacking, everything's going to be viewable, accessible. So all the information is going to be available for you, um, just going to be a, a little bit smaller. And notice you still have, um, you can still access all these links here, so everything will still work. Back to the search results. Um, <clears throat> in Research 5, there used to be a little Actions tab at the bottom of the page. Uh, when you opened up Actions, you'd see your copy, your print, your email, your basket, your PDF actions. So now what we've done to just um, eliminate, uh, uh, eliminate clicks, we've just, um, we've just added these functions on the bottom of the page. So for example, if we wanted to uh, email this information here, we could just click Email. If we want to put in Customer Format, you can do that from here as well customer format once, everything's in customer format now, and we can say email page. So essentially saving you a little bit of time. There's no longer going to be an actions tab. When you're viewing this on your mobile device, uh, you just uh, need to make sure that um, 
some of these buttons are you might not know what they what they mean because when we do minimize this now we just have icons so you just have to kind of know that this little printer stands for print this envelope is uh, email uh, basket is basket and then this little PDF icon here uh, the search button is going to appear green it's going to be a little uh, magnifying glass and the C is count so it might be a little bit of training just to remember those functions and of course uh, we've had to we just have to create icons just to uh, be able to fit, uh, fit all the functions on your mobile device <clears throat> so that's gonna be it for the search for listings page Next, I was just going to jump over to create a CMA. I'm just going to go over this briefly. It's, it works exactly the same way it did in Research 5. Uh, so what we do is we'd enter a tax key or our MLS number. We click on this little green arrow. It'll give you a description of the MLS number or the tax key. We can choose to set our sale date range. So we can either go one year or two years back. If we want to go further or go less, we can choose months or set a date range. So for example, I want to take a look at, I want to just go six months back. And um, we're just going to narrow it down to just Kauai since this is, you know, Kauai. And when we do hit search now, you're going to notice the information appears the same way as it did in Research 5. We have these headings. Um, if there's any comparable listings for sale, they'd show up under the heading. So right now we have no comps for sale, we have no comps that are contingent, under contract, or did not sell. And under these we've had um, some comps that sold, so a couple here and some information here. So other comparable sales. This is going to be um, information uh, from the TMK side. So for example, maybe the listing wasn't inputted into the MLS. If you look under other comparable sales, it's gonna, those are sales that are just going to show up on the TMK side. So next, uh, I was just going to go over get listing update. Again, this function works the same as it did in research five. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to say what this is, is um, this is pretty much uh, like the latest listing activity, except it allows you to search a certain amount of days back. So for example, what this is telling us is set sell date range for update. So what I want to do now is I want to say, let's go five days back. And what I want to see is I want to see um, <clears throat> all listings, all new listings from five days back. And I want to see all listings that went contingent contingent and all listings that were sold. So right now the system, according to my parameters, I'm gonna set I'm gonna set my range for five days back. And within those five days I want to see all the lists all the listings that came onto the market, so the all new listings. I want to see all listings that went contingent and I want to see all listings that sold within the last five days. And of course, I'm going to use a tax key region, so I'm going to say 4-4-4 four, four, four four, and search now. So what you're going to notice now is uh, we have a list, little heading here, new listings. So these are all the listings that came onto the market in the past five days. We have all the listings that uh, went contingent in the past five days. And of course, all listings that sold uh, from the past five days. So another powerful function, but um, this works exactly the same way it did in Research 5. Um, next, I'm just going to talk about the search roster briefly. <clears throat> so a lot of this is um, if you wanted to search for an agent, maybe you want to find their contact information, you can search using their agent first name or last name. You can also search by agent type. So if we want to find just the broker in charges and just the PVs, we can do so in this agent type here. We can search for agents by board, so Realtor Association, uh, Kauai Board, or if we want to search for um, agents in the, under the HIR board, Hawaii Island, and also the West Hawaii Kona Board. So 
<clears throat> for example, I'm just going to do a search right now. Let's just say I want to find all brokers in charge and all principal brokers. Let's look for principal brokers. And I want to find all those under the board of Quai, Quai board. If we do hit search now, it's going to give you a list of uh, just the PVs. So we have now the PV of A and B properties. Uh, PV of claim Kauai but so pretty much now we just have a list of only the brokers and only the PVs of these companies here <clears throat> so that's pretty much it for the search section uh, next, I just wanted to talk about the contacts page. So if we click on open contacts, I'm just going to click on contacts here. So the contact page is going to look a little bit different. And what we've done is we've added these little um, alphabet ranges so you can sort by these alphabet, alphabet ranges now. This drop down menu here allows you to select just your contacts or just your prospects. And um, notice that uh, there's a little magnifying glass next to your prospects so that's just indicating that there's a search attached to these contacts so if I wanted to put in a new contact I just click new contact I put in the first name the last name also an email address uh, you can choose to put in the um, all these other fields if you want to. Uh, there's tabs, so there's a nickname. You can also add notes to that contact. So if you have company information, you can put their company information there. And once you've finished, uh, you can just click Save Contact. So now what you want to do, if you want to create a, um, a search parameter for that contact, what you can do now is just click over to this prospect tab here. We can just click new. So now it's going to take you through the prospect wizard. Uh, it's going to just tell you uh, to put in a search parameter. And uh, from here, you, if you want to search, you can search to see the, the results. Uh, once you've um, figured out your search, uh, you can just go ahead and click next and just save. Okay, so now you have, it's telling you your prospects and saved and there was 18 matches. And from here you can either go back to the contacts page or you can go to the prospects table page. <clears throat> so the prospects page I'm just going to go over right now. This is just going to give you an overview of all the prospects you have. Um, <clears throat> if there's a little icon here, so it could be a little black icon or it's, it's gold one or this kind of orangish looking icon here. Um, so if a black one appears here, it's just telling you that there's too many matches and uh, I believe that's over 100 matches. So if if the prospect uh, has over 100 matches, it, the system won't send, so it's going to appear black right here. If they're about to expire, um, so there's going to be like this little icon that'll appear here. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to renew that prospect, you can just click on Edit and Renew. And what this orange icon here indicates is that the prospect opted out. In other words, uh, when they received your email, they chose to no longer receive emails from you. So if we wanted to um, maybe edit the search or add a search to a current prospect, we could just click on edit. And uh, right now it says add and search. We could add a search by clicking here. It'll take us to this prospect wizard again. Uh, we can just say 445 instead. I want to see actives, residentials. And I just want to see maybe properties over 500,000.
uh, once we've finished our search, we can just click Next, and we can click Save. So if we go back to Prospects, now we have uh, two, two searches attached to that one contact. If we want to delete that, or if we want to delete a search, we can just click over to edit, and we can just say, delete this prospect here. And we can either choose to delete the search criteria only, or delete the context tab is, or context page as well. In this case, we just want to delete the search. So that's it for prospects. Next, I wanted to talk about the listings page. Um, <clears throat> so if we go over to listings menu, um, all these functions are going to be the same as they were in Research 5. The one major change we've made, um, besides for just the new look, um, if you click over to new listings, so we've added a new way of entering a listing into the system. So what we have now is what we call the classic forms and our wizard forms. So classic is going to be what you used to see in Research 5. Just once you enter the tax key, it's going to bring up the listing form. You can choose to release it or save it into your holdings. The wizard form is going to be like a, the fastest way to enter a listing and add a photo to your listing and release it. So in our system, we require a photo um, on all listings. So using the wizard, you can actually add a photo within the same process of creating a listing. And within those two, um, within these two different versions, we have either required only or full. And what this is saying is uh, we can choose to show just the listing form with the required fields, or we can show the full listing form. So I believe the full listing form is uh, between seven and nine pages, and the required only might be maybe two or three pages. So I'm going to go over classic forms first. I'm just going to say required only. I'm going to enter a tax key and click create new listing. So what we have now, um, we have our listing form. Uh, this red asterisk is just indicating that this um, field is required and you're gonna notice since we selected required only, the pretty much this whole form is just uh, required fields. Uh, we can um, Collapse individual sections if you want to see it using this little icon here. Or we could um, open up form setups and collapse individual sections by just unchecking them. Uh, if we want to show all fields, so for example, if you, um, you're going through, you selected required only, but uh, now you want to see the full form, you can just say show all fields. And now we have all fields in the listing form. Uh, from here, once you've entered all your parameters in, uh, you can either save it, or which will give you an MLS number, or release it. Uh, once you release it, the listing is going to be active, and from there, you're going to need to upload a photo. Uh, using these functions here, you can print this listing, this form, you can email it, or you can PDF the form. But other than that, this um, classic form is pretty much the same thing you would see in Research 5. So now I'm just going to talk about the wizard forms and I'm going to use the required only since I use that for the classic. Uh, so you're going to notice the, uh, the wizard form has this little step-by-step -step process. So this is also good for new realtors just looking for the quick and easiest way to enter a listing into the system. So I'm just going to use enter tax keys to click next. So right now the system is pulling um, all the information from the public record database side. So some whatever information um, it can fill in, it will for you. <clears throat> so what you can see now is um, this form looks is pretty much the same form you see in the classic side. Um, we can also collapse fields using this form set up here. I'm checking these collapse. We can show the entire listing form by clicking show all fields if you wish to. Oh, well, one thing I didn't mention um, in other form is if you hover over these fields, if say you have questions about certain fields, you don't know what they are, you can hover, and uh, we do have hover help, so it does give you a description of each of the fields. Uh, once you've entered all your search, uh, or excuse me, not your search, and once you've entered all your listing information, uh, just click next. You're going to notice now it says photos. 
So from here, uh, you're just going to need to agree to the full agreement. I agree. I click continue. And right now we have a couple of uh, best practices. So for example, you want to avoid portrait style photos. Um, you want to avoid any panoramic photos. And we have our, some best some just best practice guidelines here. So 600 by 400 between the 672 DPI and 100 DPI. And from here, we can just click load photos. Um, so our new photo loader, uh, you can actually drag and drop photos or you can click to browse photos for you on your computer. And I just have a couple of photos right now on my desktop so I can show you the drag feature. If I do drag it over, it will show you a little preview. And from here, I just click Upload Now. So this photo page is, um, <clears throat> is going to allow you to um, move the photos. So if you want to uh, change the order of the photos, you can just click over or hover your mouse over to this little icon here, and you can move the photos. Also, we can enter our descriptions here. If we like everything, we can just click uh, Save All. And then we can click Next. And then from here, we have the option of uh, saving the listing to our holding or releasing the listing. You can also um, add your addendas or virtual tours or schedule an open house on the listing using these links here. Uh, since it's not a complete listing, I'm just going to save it to my holdings. And we have a little uh, message here saying it was successfully saved. So that's our wizard of modes. It's pretty much giving you the fastest way of entering a listing with a photo. For those of you uh, that want to make changes to your listing, once you've created the listing and uh, you want to update the listing, maybe you want to make price changes, you want to make any listing form changes, uh, you're going to do so using the the update listing function here. It's also going to be located um, right here in your listing menu. So we click update. You can find the listing. It's going to say use this listing. Click continue. When you are in the update listing menu, it is going to show the classic view. So we have no wizard mode for uh, update listing. Also, um, the photo menu. If you want to make changes to your photos, uh, you can do so from this uh, Manage Photos button here. And uh, those of you familiar with Research 5, uh, this photo menu is completely different. It is the same photo menu that you saw in the wizard. So any changes you can do here. So you can, uh, you can edit your remarks, you can um, <clears throat> move the photos over from this page here. Um, other than that, um, that's about it for this training. Uh, the last thing I was going to show you was just a little bit in the settings, uh, the settings menu here. So if you want to make, a, if you want to customize your email page, so for example, when you do email from the system, uh, you can um, choose to have a signature added onto that page. You can just click edit um, and it's going to allow you to edit that signature. But other than that, um, that's pretty much it for the today's training. Um, I just want to say thank you again for uh, tuning in, listening. If you have any questions, uh, we're open Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, you're welcome to call us. It's 1-800-628-3121, um, option one for tech support. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.